Welcome to episode three of the second season of our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. For those of you searching for earlier videos or names that I've covered previously, please write to me at vantagepoint22 at gmail.com and I'll send you a catalog that lists each name in the episode in which it was covered. On today's episode, we'll investigate six more names that were requested by people just like you. Now, if you're new to the channel, I try to mix in a bit of history and trivia along with the origin and meaning of the surnames to give it context and I hope that you'll see that while we may be patriotic Americans, we share cultural traits with long dead people who never saw the land of the free and the home of the brave. I hope you'll join me. Number one, Pinnell, Payne, or Pine. Sometimes when I research a surname, I get the heebie-jeebies. Have you ever had those? This English name was originally spelled Pagnell, but it originated in Old French as Paganel. Now here's the meaning and my source for the willies. Let's start with the French suffix el. It tells us that the part before it is diminutive or little. What's before it? Pagan. Yes, pagan. The original bearers of the surname were thought of as pagan, but they were either small in stature or their commitment to paganism was light, hence the diminutive suffix. To me, I suppose it's kind of like Bud Light, but in this case, it's Pagan Light, but I really don't know what the difference is. <laughs> anyway, as you might recall, I was raised by my maternal grandparents. Uh, my grandmother, Nanny, was a Payne, which shares a similar linguistic origin to Pagnell. She would not have liked knowing that her family members were once Pagans. At the end of the day, though, I'm confident that these surnames were introduced into the Isles by French-speaking Normans or the good old Vikings that lived in Neustria on the west coast of France. Payne and Pine were in Ireland by the 14th century, so Payne or Pine can be of recent Irish origin. Pinnell, however, is English. In all cases, the linguistic origins rest with the French-speaking Vikings. Number two, Wahope or Wa. In other videos, we talk about how the lengthy periods of lawlessness of the Scottish-English border country created conditions that reinforced a clannish character among the families living in that region. Even Norman lords adopted the clannish ways of the southern part of Scotland. Now, those characteristics were later transplanted to Appalachia, where clans carried on similar kinds of border justice just like the feuds between the Hatfield and the McCoys and many, many other families, folks. They didn't have a strong central government, and if you were a criminal or something, you could skip across the border in Scotland into England, you know, and you were safe, and vice versa. It was King James who became King of England in 1603 when Elizabeth I, his cousin, died. He was already the King of Scotland. So now we had this the first time in history somebody who could rule over both sides of the Scottish border country, and many of them took off and went to Ulster, the northern part of uh, Ireland, and then came on to America. So they brought their cultural traits with them, and one of those traits was uh, justice. In other words, feuds. <laughs> Now, Wohop and Wa were habitational names coming from the southern part of Scotland in Dumfrieshire and Roxburghshire. I think we're safe in calling Wahop and Wa border British or Scottish surnames. Number three, Logan. When thinking about Appalachia during the colonial days, I often think of Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone is, was, a, was a big hero of mine when I was a kid, so I kind of looked up to him and idolized him. Of course, who I really was looking up to was Fess Parker, who I'm going to mention again in just a second. Now, admittedly, the flame of Boone's fame was brighter during and after the 1960s when the TV series that starred Fess Parker as Daniel was a primetime hit. In 1775, the same year that Boone and his crew of 33 woodsmen blazed the Wilderness Road and built Fort Boonesboro on the banks of the Kentucky River, Colonel Benjamin Logan established Logan's Fort near what is today Stanford, Kentucky. It's interesting that Logan's Fort was also called St. Asaph, which is the name of a small Welsh town. Logan's Fort was situated about 45 miles southwest of Boone's Fort. At any rate, the first record of the surname Logan that I could find was the mentioning of Robert Logan in Ayrshire, Scotland in 1204. Eber McLeisick says that there are multiple origins of the name in, <clears throat> in Ireland. One is the Scottish name that we just mentioned, and so it would be a Scotch-Irish name, if you will. And another is an alternate form of the Irish name Lohan, as in Lindsay Lohan. At the end of the day, I'm confident that 
Logan is a Scottish or Northern Irish surname. Now you can also label it as Ulster Scots, Scots, or Scotch-Irish family name. It's up to you. The name Logan was derived from Gaelic and it means little uh, dweller or dweller at the little hollow. Not a little person at the, well I guess it could have been, but it just meant a, a dweller at a little hollow, a small place. Number four, Tackett. While I'm an avid motorcyclist who owns a Honda Adventure bike and a Triumph Scrambler, I live in an area where ATV riding is so popular that it's a tourist attraction. One such trail is called Tackett Creek. The ET suffix suggests a French origin, which in turn, which turns out to be an alternate form of the French tech, uh, tech eh? <laughs> Yeah, tech eh, that's right. I had to remember my French pronunciation from all those years of study. Uh, given its absence from Harrison's book and its short discussion in Black's book, it looks like a strong candidate for it being a French Huguenot name rather than a, that of a Norman family. Now you might ask, why Van? Are you delusional? No. <laughs> the Normans were a larger, much earlier population to resettle in the British Isles, so they had time for their names to become more generally wi widely distributed. Now according to 23andMe, most Tackets in America descend from Louis Tackett, a uh, French Huguenot, who arrived in Virginia shortly after 1686. Now this makes sense in a historical context because when the French government revoked the Edict of Nantes in 1685, religious toleration of Protestants was wiped out for decades to come. Many of them went to Wales, England, and also to, uh, to Ulster, and some came on to America. I guess the ones who could afford it came on to America. The Huguenots uh, were staunch Calvinists, so along with Lutheranism, their movement was not welcome anymore in the staunchly Catholic country. I think that you're safe in being a Protestant there now, though. At the end of the day, I think we're safe in calling Tackett an Americanized French surname. Number five, Halsey or Halsey. When I started to work on Halsey or Halsey, I had flashbacks of two of my favorite Clint Eastwood movies that I saw at the Grove Theater in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Every Which Way But Loose came out in 1978, and Any Which Way You Can came out in 1980. Now you might ask, why would Halsey make me remember those movies, Van? Are you delusional? <laughs> well, Clint's love interest in the films was played by his real-life girlfriend, Sandra Locke. Now here's a connection to Halsey. Her character's name was Lynn Halsey Taylor. As it turns out, Halsey, in its alternate form, Halsey, originated in Old English as a compound word for a hay enclosure. Later, when the language developed into Middle English, it took on the meaning of an island or low uh, riparian land. An examination of the traditional surnames of Scotland, Ireland, and Wales failed to make a connection to either spelling. So I think we're safe in calling Halsey an Old English surname and Halsey an Americanized version. Number six, Maguire or Maguire. There's no shortage of Maguire folks in the South. In Irish Gaelic, this Hibernian name was, which meant the son of the sallow or pale-faced man. Even though it's an Irish surname, Maguire found a home in Scotland, specifically Ayrshire, in the southwest, where it has been in the Scottish record since 1740. No doubt there are Maguires in England as well, but I'm confident that Maguire is an Irish surname. This conclusion is supported by George Fraser Black in his book on surnames of Scotland, who gives Maguire an Irish origin, so I will follow his lead. Folks, you can't go wrong with Henry Harrison's book on the surnames of the United Kingdom or Edward McLeisick's book on the surnames of Ireland and George Fraser Black's book on uh, uh, Scottish surnames. Check them out. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you today. And uh, I'm only teaching one college class this summer along with directing several dissertations. So I have time to mix in another video per week over the next two months. I sure appreciate it if that's something that you would welcome, and so please let me know in the comment section. In the meantime, may the Lord bless and keep you, may He make His face shine on you, and give you peace. Bye-bye.